Well, hey everybody, welcome back to Palm Tree Life. I wanted to take some time to go through the math behind the battles in CK3. Uh, I'm just going to warn you, this can get... I went down the rabbit hole a little bit on this, um, but for me, maybe you're like me, and uh, I love playing games. Uh, I love seeing the the beauty of the graphics and everything come alive but at some point uh, I like to dig a little bit deeper just to understand what is actually happening behind all the graphics uh, to understand why like I may be able to understand that I'm gonna win a certain battle uh, maybe I think it's gonna be pretty close and maybe I just I, I have that from intuition or playing the game or having an understanding of how the mechanics work to a certain level but I like to dive a little bit deeper sometimes and I like to go uh, a bit deeper to see why those that math, and those calculations are actually working in my favor. So I may have a good feel for it, but to know exactly why always helps me out a little bit more to understand why maybe a specific unit might be better uh, within uh, you know a certain uh, army type or in a certain area or involved in a certain train. Like I know those all. Uh, work into the the mathematics of just the basic uh, unit stats, but then how does it play out in a battle? So we're going to get a little bit deeper into this uh, video to cover some of that. If you're new to Crusader Kings 3, you may not understand that there's four phases of battle, so I just want to quickly cover this. There's four phases. The maneuver phase is really just setting up everything that's going to happen during the battle. I'm going to touch on that in just a second. The early battle is the first uh, several days, 12 days of battle. If an army loses in those 12 days, they get stack wiped. And if you're unfamiliar with that term, basically that just means your entire army is lost. Uh, they, they were defeated so quickly they couldn't even get away. The late battle is just to wrap it up until somebody loses all their toughness or somebody uh, loses all their men. Uh, that is just finishing up the entire battle or until somebody retreats actually too, which would take us to the aftermath phase which is where there's an army trying to get away and set up screens to be able to get away, and then there's an army pursuing after them. I am not going to cover all the stats in the aftermath because I'm going to go pretty deep into the early and late battle here, and so I'm going to include some links at the bottom that will take you to other uh, people that loved finding out all these stats and things that will... Uh, give you the formulas uh, for all of that. So if you want to go deeper, I'm trying to explain visually how these stats take place. All right, in the maneuver phase, you the, one of the very first things that happens is there's a combat width. So if you're familiar with uh, specifically like Hearts of Iron 4, uh, there is a combat width depending on the train and how, you know, different um, provinces come together and connect. In Crusader Kings 3, the combat width is figured out a little bit more simply, uh, but the math behind it, it, and I will show you um, more of a formula later for this, but the math behind it is you take your amount of troops, you add their amount of troops, which gives you a total amount of troops, then you cut it in half, so normally that would give you the combat width, but in the specific train type that this battle that I'm showing you is happening, is happening in the train type of hills, which cuts that halved combat width by 80%. So when you add in our strength of 5601 with their strength of 2316, you get a total amount of 7917, so 7,917 troops. You cut that in half, and it's 3,958, but we only get 80% of that for the combat width, so that's 3,166. Uh, there's decimals in all of these mathematics. I'm not going to go that deep into the decimals. I'm going to round everything, so in the game, if it rounds down or up or doesn't round at all, I don't know how it does that. I haven't gone to that depth, uh, but I decided to just go whole numbers, not get into the crazy decimals. So 3,166. 
And I will show you that right there you can see that the combat width is 3,166. And in the mathematics, it should be 3,166.8. And it didn't round up. So if that's any tell that it just doesn't round until it's a whole number, that might be where you see that. Also in the maneuver phase, you have the initial advantage. So this is taking my current ruler or, or commander of my army and his martial skill and any additions that he has. And you can see I added all of my perks to the left side of the screen and it carried up to the top because he does have a martial skill. So I just added them all in. I also showed you why we have an advantage of 25 in the maneuver phase even before a die roll has happened. And then I showed you their commander's uh, perks. He doesn't have many. Um, and so you can already see on a commander level, we vastly have a, I mean, our advantage is just massive in comparison to his. And so you can see, you can also see, and we'll get into these in just a moment, but you can see where the counters are. Green, green means that uh, it, it is successfully countering. Red means it is successfully being countered. Um, and so we'll get into some of those. I did want to touch on advantage as well. In the advantage, in this specific battle, you won't be able to really see it because I didn't use the video from it. I'm just trying to show a screenshot. But in the, in the battle, I attacked this enemy, but I'm getting the benefit of being the defender because we are fighting on my land. So that is an important thing to remember is that you can get advantage if, if even if you're attacking them and you are the attacker in the overall war, you can be a defender in a battle if you are fighting on your territory instead of their territory, which I was able to accomplish within this specific battle. Also in the maneuver phase, it is calculating, like immediately calculating, the perks and effects of the terrain additions or subtractions for your men at arms. It's also adding in all the perks of your uh, champions or knights. Uh, into all of the stats immediately. So on this specific uh, men at arms unit, you can see that my bowmen generally have a damage of 33.5. But you're going to see that the damage that actually is taking place within this battle is 43 because I'm getting the benefit of the terrain type, which is hills. This would be true for all of the rest of my men at arms. I just wanted to use bowmen as an example to show you that the damage and toughness and pursuit and screen added in, they, they automatically do that. You don't have to figure it in. So when you see stats and you're looking at the different stats during a battle, it is accurate according to everything happening, all the perks, all of the uh, terrain modifications, everything in that battle is all added into the stats that you're looking at. You can also see that my champion effectiveness is at 210%, so normal effectiveness I think is 100%, and then as you add in different perks and things, it, that effectiveness can grow. You can get, um, you can benefit your troops and your champions through holy sites that your faith may have. Uh, you can do it through lifestyle perks. You can see that my champion effectiveness is 210%, so basically you're taking every prowess and you're multiplying it by 2.1. So, I mean, my knights right now, you can see on this specific uh, picture, those prowess 21 individuals are actually more like 43. So knight effectiveness is massive. So one, just one champion is doing as much damage as a hundred of my bowmen. So it's knights are, they are just very good in this game. And I would, re, sometimes this comes up, so I just would remind you, when it's showing the knight prowess and, and kind of giving these statistical dynamics, it's not viewing them as one person, it's viewing them as a knight and their squires and all the people that would be around them. It's like their conglomeration of people. So it's not just one man doing this damage. It's their group. And their group has a 43 prowess together. Uh, and so they can do some major damage 
within a battle. All right, now we get to the early battle phase. You can see it sig signified by the bow and arrow there, the early battle phase. And initially, my champion wounded one of their champions. You can see their champion has zero prowess. So in the statistical data, it really doesn't affect anything because he was going to do zero anyway because of that zero prowess. So. I wanted to show that that happened, so you can see that definitely can happen within a battle. You can lose a champion because they were wounded or killed, and you will lose their statistical data as a result. But in this case, he was zero, and so he was never going to provide any anything over zero anyway. You can also see here that we had our first die roll. I rolled a three. The enemy commander rolled a one. So my advantage went up plus two. So we went from plus 25, which would, was just the base. I was naturally 25 advantage better than the other commander. We did our die roll, which got me two more. So that's plus 27. Every advantage, so every plus advantage to you, is 2% more overall damage as an army. So right now, when I show you my total damage uh, that we are inflicting on our enemy, it is actually going to be um, the, have a factor of, of addition of 54%. So I will explain that here in just a moment. Within this current battle day, so you can see we're still in the early battle phase. I, we're still in the current day. I still have the plus 27 advantage, which is going to add 54% uh, extra damage. I wanted to show you all the stats from the different units and what the counters are. So you can see here that my Zbrojnaj, my special unit, they're getting 49 damage because of where we're fighting and terrain and all that, and they're getting 30 toughness, and that's per 100. You can see in the upper right there, it's showing that's per 100 men. So I have more than 100, okay, so that would be uh, uh, 197 total. So if you want to see the total damage that's happening, it's 197 times 49. That's the total damage that this Brojnash is doing. However, you can see that I'm being countered, and so I'm only dealing 50% damage. So it would be my damage times 197, but then it would be cut in half, it would be times 0.5 to show the overall damage that that specific unit is doing. And you can see it all the way down for all the different units, you can see how many levies I have there, and you can see the champions that I have and what the prowess is of each, and you can do that also with the enemy's units. And what I want to do is, I'm going to I'm going to take you, and, and I'm this is the, <laughs> Paradox did a great job of making a lot of statistical uh, data very beautiful and very eye-catching within a game and very easy to access but i'm going to make <laughs> i'm just warning you this is going to be a little bit uglier and i i i am sorry that uh, this is not going to be as visually pleasing but i really want to break out what this um what is the math and the all the formulas and stuff that is happening in one day of battle behind all this beautiful beautiful graphical design. So let's look at this. All right, if you haven't gone blind and if your brain hasn't gone numb from all the numbers, let me do my best to try to explain this. So you can see I included the combat width there towards the center and it's just the same explanation that I gave you before. Our troops versus uh, added with their troops, which gives us the total number of troops, which gets cut in half, that's the normal combat width. However, we have a terrain, terrain modifier, because we're in the hills, which is 80%, and so the adjusted width is 3,166.8. That means that my army is larger than that, their army is smaller, so their army is fighting at 100%. My army is fighting not at 100%, we're, we're fighting, uh, currently we are over, 
the combat width limit. And so we are fighting as an entire army at 58% of our total damage capability because we are above that combat limit or that combat width. So if you're going into a battle and you want to know what your combat width adjustment modifier, like what percentage you're actually fighting at as an overall uh, army, all you need to do, you see that the second to last row there, I have combat width adjustment. On their side, it says one because their entire army can fit within that combat width of 3,166. If you go up to the uh, yellow filled in box there of total troops on their side, they have just over 2,000. And so they f easily fit within that 3,100. On my side, I have 5,595 troops, so I'm over the combat width limit. So how this gets adjusted and modified is that I take the combat width, which is 3,166, I divide it by my amount of troops, which gives me 0.58. Okay, and so I am being modified in my damage to 58% or 0.58 within the statistical data. All right, let's look at the damage, and I'm going to focus on my army, but let's look at the damage that we can do. So you can see there the total damage from each champion that I have. All right, so you can go down. I have 12 of them there. You can see the damage that they have the, the capacity to do. So my total damage is 17,300, but remember, I have an efficiency multiplier of 210%. So it's that 17,300 multiplied by 2.1, which gives me 36,330 as the total damage that my champions have the capacity to do within this, uh, this specific day of battle, okay? If you move beyond this day, one of them could be killed, and then that would modify this even more. So you have to pay attention to those things. When you go down into my men at arms, you can see that I'm doing the amount of damage that we can do for that specific day, the amount of troops that I have. So each unit is capable of doing 49 damage, or each troop is capable of doing 49 damage because of all the modifiers in the train, and the, this specific unit works really well in hills. So 49 multiplied by 197. Now they are being countered, as I showed you previously, and they're being countered to only be able to do 50% damage. So it's 49 multiplied by 197 multiplied by 50% or 0.5, which gives me the total damage of 4827. So you can do that with all your men at arms. My pikemen are not being countered, which is why it says one there. There's no modifier. You go all the way down, and my men at arms are doing damage of 44,110. Or sorry, that's my levies. Uh, so when you add in my levies with that, you get the total damage, which is that uh, right under total troops there. You follow it over. You have 90, 98,276. That's my total damage. But I have the advantage from my commander, right? And we have 27% advantage, which, or, or sorry, plus 27 advantage, which gives us 2% for every damage, which would be 40 or 54%. So it's 98,276 total damage multiplied by 54% or 0.54, which gives me an extra uh, advantage damage of 53,069, which gives me a total adjusted damage of 151,345. That's how many total, total damage. Now, how, they, how the game calculates it out is they consider one damage as 0 .03 actual damage to the other uh, opponent. And so you take that total amount of damage, you multiply it by 0 .03 right there, which would give me 4,540 damage that's going to be inflicted on my enemy if I was within the combat width, which we know I'm not, I'm, I'm larger, so I'm only doing 58% damage. So when I do 4,540 multiplied by 58% or 0.58, you get 2,617. Now I'm going to show you how that damage takes place and actually gets inflicted 
on the enemy. So you can see 2,617. Well, what to find out where that damage went against the enemy, you can see that I have a column, and it's if you go to the far right, you see men lost there in the middle with men at arms, and if you go to the second to the right, you see damage taken. So this is where my 2,617 damage was actually inflicted on the enemy. And how you find that out is the percentage of damage is in conjunction. It's, it's, it's uh, put evenly over the other army according to how many troops make up that army. So the different troop types. So you can see they ha their levies make up 70% of their army. The bowmen make four up 14% of their army. And the light footmen and Connie make up 8% each of their army. The knights do get added into this, or the champions, they do get added in, but they have eight. It's going to be like 0.03%. So, and you could see one of them did get injured, so it did. I did inflict damage onto their champions. I just didn't include it in here because for the purposes of this, once again, I'm not trying to get down to the extreme decimals. I'm just trying to show you vi as best as I can visually how these stats happen over the course of a day of battle. So you can see, because of that, I took 70% of 2,617 damage, which is 1,824 damage that the levies took. And 201 to Connie, 372 to Bowman, and 220 to Light Footman. Now, how you figure out how many men you could potentially lo lose, and it's going to be close to these numbers. It may not be exact. Once again, when you get into the decimals, do they go up? Do they go down? Different things can happen. Your troops are also taking damage and, and things. And so it does factor in a little bit, but it's going to be very, very close to these numbers, depending on all of that. And how you figure out how many potential men you lose, this is where that toughness statistic comes into play. You take the damage taken. So let's look at their levies. Their levies took 1,824 damage. That's how much they took from my army. Then you look at the toughness category, two columns to the left there. And it shows that levies have 10 toughness. So you take the damage taken divided by the toughness, which is 10, which is 182. So that's how many men you're going to lose. Damage taken divided by toughness. All right. So you can see the Connie took 201 damage because there's eight, they are make up 8% of the army. They have a toughness of 15. And so when you do 201 divided by 15, it equals 13 men lost. This You can go through this every single day uh, and just keep adjusting if you lose champions or knights, keep adjusting the advantage, and the advantage, the die roll happens every three days, so you just have to be ready. You know, um, in this specific battle, the other commander ended up doing better die rolls, and my advantage actually went down throughout this battle, uh, day by day. You're going to lose troops, so you have to adjust it. And I set up the formulas within this table where all I have to do is insert the base amount of troops that I have in each spot. And it just calculates it all for me so that I can just see what's going to happen within the next day. This may not matter a whole lot when you're in a battle. But if you're thinking about going up against a potential enemy and you can put in some of these uh, factors, you can have a rough idea if you have a chance, like a really good chance of defeating them in specific terrain. Uh, it might even show you, if you go in with a specific combat width, you might have uh, more success than if you tried to go in with a larger army. So you can play with the numbers a little bit. I just wanted to give a visual to what's actually happening behind it, and I hope that it's uh, it's being helpful for you. All right, so basically what happens, we, we covered the maneuver phase with finding the advantage and the combat width and all the perks and uh, buildings and, and holy sites and everything that gets added in to the initial statistics in the maneuver phase. We talked about the early battle phase where you begin that battle and what is actually happening within one day of battle 
I tried to show you those stats. The late battle, uh, if you don't defeat the army early and you get into the late battle, it really is just the same thing. That day is happening over and over and over again, just plugging in the correct stats until finally somebody decides to retreat. Uh, somebody loses all their toughness and has to you know, leave the battlefield, uh, whatever there. And then in the aftermath, you would just add in, and there are specific formulas for pursuit and for screen. I didn't have a lot of that happen in this specific battle, and I feel like I kind of went down the rabbit hole enough giving stats that you can see how this plays out. Um, and, and my goal would be to uh, win enough of the early battle that you don't have to worry about the aftermath. All you're doing is chasing after them. But if you really want to know the stats on the aftermath, I have included a link into the uh, video notes uh, because they, I really did get all of these stats from other people that did a lot of hard work, and I, I want to make sure that I'm pointing you to the specific areas that uh, help me do this. I just didn't find anything that was very visual with it, and so I wanted to give you something more of a video uh, just relaying the stats that a lot of other people have found. I included the video here of all of the stats coming out of this battle. So you could see day by day how many different men I lost, how many uh, kills were inflicted, how many, uh, like what my champions did, uh, what happened in each phase. So if you really want to see all of that, you're welcome to watch this video. But if you would do me a huge favor, if this was helpful for you, I'd appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. Um, if you've seen something where uh, maybe it would even benefit me or other people out, feel free to include it into the comments. Make sure you check out those links. It will help you. It will give you the formula. And if you really want access to this spreadsheet, I am willing to do that. You can just connect with me, DM me on uh, Discord uh, or write in the comments and we'll connect and I will get it to you if you really want to play this out over the course of uh, a specific battle just to see the different dynamics and how everything happens. Once again, appreciate you checking out this video and I look forward to seeing you next time.